Home Alone was a holiday classic, and its sequel, Home Alone 2 Lost in New York, was a strong follow-up that also raked in a ton of money at the box office. Of course, video games based on the series were released around the same time as the films. I covered the SNES game that was based on the original film, which was decent. The sequel, Home Alone 2, was released in 1992, just like the movie, and although it was released on the Super Nintendo just like its predecessor, I'm specifically going to cover the NES version, although the SNES version is basically the same, only more enhanced. And although it was published by THQ just like its predecessor, the development responsibilities were shifted from Bethesda to Imagineering, who gave us some awesome NES titles like Heavy Shredding, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, and Swamp Thing. So yeah, this might be rough. On the other hand, they did develop Ghostbusters 2, which may have been a crap game, but it was an improvement over the original NES version, which was also developed by somebody else, although that was more of a bad port than an actual bad game. Anyway, I'm getting way off track here. So Home Alone 1 had you play as Kevin McAllister, running around the house collecting items and tossing them down the laundry chute to protect them from the wet bandits. And once you dumped a certain amount, you head into the basement to battle the boss, lock up the items, and you're done with the stage. But that concept wouldn't work in Home Alone 2, so the game goes for a more traditional linear platformer where you just have to get from point A to point B and move on to another stage. Various locations from the movie are utilized, like the Plaza Hotel, Central Park, your uncle's renovated house, and the Rockefeller Center. You'd think it would have been a no-brainer to include a stage for Duncan's toy chest, but what are you going to do? Everyone and everything in New York City is out to kill you between disgruntled hotel staff members, random dickheads in the park, and dilapidated buildings with chunks of ceiling falling down on you. So it's a pretty accurate depiction of New York. You can collect weapons to defend yourself, like the necklace which you can drop to trip enemies that walk towards you, the dart gun which will stun enemies and you can also collect darts to refill it, the flying fists and super flying fists, a gun that fires a fist to wipe out enemies off the screen completely, the Super Fist will follow through and take out all the enemies in one shot, while the regular fist can only hit one and sometimes take multiple shots. All of these weapons have a limited amount of ammo. The one attack you can do as often as you want is this weird knee slide which Kevin did in the first movie on the Frozen Pond. You run and then hold down to pull it off, and it also helps to evade enemies at head level. There are power-ups you can collect too, like the pizza slice that'll give you an extra life if you collect six of them, a whole pizza which gives you an extra life outright, cookies, grabbing five batches will give you an extra hit point, or heart as they're represented with, a bell which gives you a flip attack you can utilize while jumping, a candy cane which gives you temporary invincibility, and aftershave which gives you a temporary speed boost and temporary invincibility. Now as far as the gameplay goes, it leaves a lot to be desired. The controls are pretty stiff, especially with jumping, so when you're trying to land on these narrow platforms or maneuver up these platforms, it's tricky, but in a cheap way. Then there's other cheap bullshit, like how there are multiple side rooms that oftentimes have an enemy you have to deal with, but there's an item in the room or a key or something. But sometimes there are rooms that have these enemies and there's nothing else, rendering them completely pointless other than to piss you off and drain your health. And how about the very first enemy on the screen killing you in one hit if you don't move right away? If he gets a hold of you, he'll strangle you to death and there's a life gone right off the bat. And if you want some other underhanded bullshit, when you lose all your lives and get a game over, the screen says press start to continue. But no matter where you left off, you're back at the beginning of the first level. So they don't mean continue where you leave off, they mean continue your journey back to the beginning of the fucking game. So yeah, there's no continues. Then there's cryptic bullshit, like where you're supposed to go when you get to the end of this hallway. At first glance, you figure you need to enter one of these elevators, and while that's completely accurate, it's ridiculous as to how you make this happen. If you jump on this trash can or whatever it is, and push the call button by pressing up, then you'll hear a sound indicating that it did something. But nothing happens. You have to press it over and over and over and over again until finally the elevator opens. I don't know if this was meant to be realistic, because elevators often do take forever, but come on, this is terrible design. Just completely unacceptable. Then after you do manage to get on the elevator, you'll head down the hall on the next floor and hit a dead end. 
So of course you're supposed to figure out that once you reach here, you're supposed to go back to the elevators where you came and call the elevator back down. It's just weird, illogical shit. There's also a lack of bosses. In the first level, you get a boss battle with this chef who strangely loses his clothing the more you hurt him. And then there are no more boss battles until the final showdown with Harry and Marv. Then there's the graphics, which aren't the worst looking I've ever seen on the console, but they do look like they were just thrown together haphazardly. Speaking of just being thrown together, the music sounds about as rushed and cobbled together as anything. I can hear some instances of music from the movies in spots, and maybe there's more than I'm hearing, but the songs are executed so poorly that you can't even tell. If they're actually going for music from the movie, then that would be worse, actually. Either way, the music sucks. It's not like Home Alone 1 was a video game classic or anything, but it was at the very least playable. Home Alone 2 isn't completely unplayable, but it's definitely closer to that than the playability of its mediocre predecessor. The series is trending in the wrong direction at this point, so thank god Home Alone 3 was never made into a video game. I could only imagine how bad that would have been. So the game opens up with a cutscene of the concierge alerting the hotel employees that Kevin is using a stolen credit card and needs to be taken down. Meanwhile, Harry alerts his fellow bandit buddies that he needs help killing a kid. So while this is insane, it at least gives an excuse as to why everyone in the world wants Kevin dead. So the first stage is the hotel. This bellhop douchebag that I mentioned earlier is the first enemy you'll see. Get away from him quickly, cause like I mentioned earlier, if he gets a hold of you, he'll wring your neck and it'll cost you a life. Hop on the couch and you'll find a pizza slice here and a necklace here. Make sure that the bellhop is turned and started back the other way before going for the necklace. Hop onto this plant to get up here and take the cookies. Just keep in mind you won't stay on top of the plant for long. You'll slip down. Hop over the suitcase. It'll just shuffle back and forth and grab the pizza and cookies. Jump over the vacuum and be careful not to get in front of it because it'll suck you up and take a life away in one swoop. Hop onto this couch and jump to find the dark gun. Then there'll be another pizza slice and an old lady hopping back and forth waving an umbrella. You can use the dark gun to stunner, or as I prefer, slide. Once you get the timing down, it's not hard at all, and you'll be able to save ammo in the process. Head into the gift shop, hop up the shelves until you're at the top, and then jump across to get the fist shooter. Then hop over the cashier, and stay between the balls he throws at you and head back out. Grab the necklace and pizza slice, and then shoot this guy with the luggage cart to get by, and then you'll hit up the reception area. The guy behind the desk will toss more of those pink balls from earlier, plus keys which will fall from the ceiling. I think this is the only game I've ever seen where a key actually hurts you. Is this supposed to be the key that opens up one of those little refrigerators or something? Once you see three items in front of you, jump between them and move before more of them come. Then grab the darts and a hidden necklace right next to it. Skip the newsroom. A guy in here will grab you almost immediately, and even if you do evade and take them out, there are no items or anything of purpose, so fuck this room. Regardless of whether or not you go in there, the guy will come out of the room and pursue you. Just keep going, wait for the opening between these mops, and pass through. Then you'll get to the end of the hall with two elevators and a butt-ton of suitcases that come flying out of the door at the end. And this is the part I mentioned earlier about pressing the button a million times before it eventually opens. Now, it'll take you to one of four random floors, 11, 12, 14, or 15. I like how they skip 13 like a lot of real hotels do. So you'll have to complete each one in a random order. For the purposes of the video, I'll just show them in chronological order. On the 11th floor, head right, enter the first door, and you'll see a crazy maid jumping on the bed and throwing bloodstained pillows at you. If you have weapons, take her out, or stun her, grab the hidden cookies, and leave. Or if you don't have weapons, don't bother. Just keep going. In the next room, the same thing. Crazy maid on the bed, she's got cookies, plus hidden cookies on the bed. At the end of the hall, there are more cookies, and you might ask yourself, where the hell am I supposed to go here? But this game is idiotic, so on all four of these floors, you're supposed to run all the way to the end, and then back to the elevators where you'll call for the elevator to take you to another random floor. At least this time, you only have to hit the fucking button once. At the beginning of floor 12, the guy from the newsroom will appear from the left. 
So head right and escape unless you can wipe him out with your flip attack. In the first room, the maid is guarding some darts. The next room has a bellhop. Take him out with your flips if you can, otherwise don't bother, it's not worth the pizza slice. There are cookies at the end of the hall. And in the last room, the maid is guarding a fist shooter, necklace, and candy cane. Take them and head back to the elevators. Floor 14 has umbrella ladies and luggage men. In the first room, the maid will be guarding cookies. Head out, grab the cookies in the hall, and enter the next room with another maid. This time you'll get a pizza slice, a necklace, and a super fist shooter. Finally, in the last room, after tackling another maid, you'll get a dart gun and a bell. Use your flip attacks to your advantage heading back to the elevator. And finally, the 15th floor has one of these bellhops right off the bat. So move quickly and head into the first door, take out the maid, and grab the two pizza slices. Keep going, grab the cookies, and you'll reach the end. Enter this room, take out the maid, get the darts, and then head back out and back to the elevator. Once you complete all four floors, you'll move on to floor 16. In the first room, another crazy maid who's guarding Aftershave. And then the maid in the next room will be guarding a bell. Next room you have that bellhop who's right beside the door, so if you go inside, move quickly. But there's nothing in this room and it's fucking pointless, so don't. After that, you'll get another elevator shaft at the end. Take it down to the kitchen, and you're at the home stretch of the stage. Hop up these boxes to get the fist shooter. You'll run into the newsroom guy. Take him out, and then you'll reach a conveyor belt with some pissed off workers tossing these things at you. Hop up onto the belt, jump over the things, and shoot the guy to stun him and move on. Watch out for the spray from overhead too. You won't be able to see it coming, so wait for it first. Then you've got these butchers cutting meat. Jump over the meat, shoot the butcher to stun him, and pass through. You'll get to the boss, the chef who throws meat at you and jumps around. Thankfully the meat won't hit you unless you jump, it otherwise sails right over your head. To attack him, do your running slide after he lands. If you try it while he's on his way down, then you'll be the one who takes damage. After each hit, you'll reduce an article of clothing from him for some odd reason. Keep this going until he's down to his undies, and he scampers away in a fit of humiliation. You'll get a full pizza, and you're done with the stage. You'll get a cutscene where Harry and Marv capture Kevin, and reveal their plan to steal all the cash from the toy store that night, all while Kevin records this with his talk boy. Kevin taps this woman in the back, prompting her to punch Marv in the face, assuming it was him, and it gives Kevin a chance to escape, and the Central Park stage begins. These rats will wander back and forth. Take them out with your slide attack, and watch out for these pricks in trees dropping balls. Let them bounce and then hop over them. At this park bench, jump onto this receptacle, and jump while holding up to get into this hidden area where if you scale the branches, then you can get a couple of pizza slices. But it's a pain in the batted ass. You have to hold B while fidgeting the D-pad. I don't even know how the hell to explain it. It's broken as shit. But there are no enemies here. So all you have to worry about is falling down the middle back to the street where you'll have to go back up. Then there's a pizza here, but watch out for this asshole swinging a club from the bushes. Wait for him to sink back into the bushes, but he doesn't waste time popping back out, so move quickly. Or shoot him if you have ammo to stun him and then run. There's also a guy that hangs down from the trees, so don't jump aimlessly or you'll get clipped. By this receptacle, there's a dart gun. Grab it. Jump onto this bench up here for another hidden tree area. This time there is a candy cane waiting for you. After this club guy, grab the cookies and watch out for these bats that fly overhead. Do a slide to get under them, or just crouch and let them fly on by. When you get to this brick building, grab the super fist, and a little while later are some darts. And then you'll hit a dead end. Big surprise, right? First thing I did when I got here was go back to the beginning. Why not? It's the same kind of bullshit you had to do in the first stage. But of course, all I got was a nice view of this. So there must be some other cryptic bullshit you're supposed to figure out, right? Lo and behold, there is. When you reach the lamppost in the middle, you'll notice there are different colored bricks above. You have to get up there. So stand on the bottom of the post and hold up to climb. And once you get to the top, jump once so you land on top of the post, and then you can reach the platforms. You can climb up either of the two posts that have this platform up top, but you'll want to venture to the left eventually. 
as you scale the platforms, watch out for the bats. And when you get up top, head left and drop down to the other side of the wall past the dead end. You'll drop down into the sewer, and it ain't much better in here, kid. The pigeons in here drop, I don't know, sticks, I guess? Move slowly, let them drop their shit, and duck down to let the low flying birds pass over you. When you get to the end, you'll have to climb this ladder as pigeons continue to fly from the right side. Wait until there's an opening and quickly climb to get out. You won't have much time to react to them. Down the home stretch, you've got more rats and club guys until you get to this building with an open window. Jump through it to advance immediately to the next level. No boss battle. Now you're in your uncle's renovated house, and in this stage you need to find keys to advance through to the next floor. These doors that say up, those are the locked ones you need to get through. So head right, carefully jump onto these narrow platforms. You can only stand on the edge, and it's not easy to land with these stiff ass controls, so take your time. When you get to the scaffolding area where Harry and Marv are inconceivably facing the other way, climb up here, and when Marv turns around, pull the string here just in time for the 20,000 pound anvil to crush Marv and then take off. If you miss, he or Harry will grab you if you try to escape and then you're dead. Move on, grab the pizza slice here, maneuver between the falling debris, and you can enter this opening to another room. But you do have the option first of continuing on past the falling debris, across a couple of planks to another pizza slice, and then come back to the open room. Marv will be on the other side, so quickly jump onto this couch, and then double jump to bounce your way over him, grabbing the pizza slices along the way. If he catches up to you, simply jump over the hole in the floor, and he'll go back, freeing you up to go back for the pizza that you missed. Now you're at a dead end with the hole in the floor. So of course you're supposed to figure out that you need to go down the same looking hole that you've been dying in throughout the level. Drop down to the far right side to take the key. Otherwise, if you miss, you'll have to go back and try again. At least the game is generous enough to send you back to the room where you meet Marv if you miss the key. If you grab the key, it'll take you back to the beginning of the floor where your locked door is, so you don't have to do any backtracking. On the second floor, you'll come across a paint can on a sawhorse. Marv will chase you, lure him back, shoot the can, and he'll slip on the paint and fall off screen. Enter the next door, and jump over the cord that sets off the tool trap. Let Marv take the abuse again, grab the key, head through the door, and you're back where you came in from. But you still need another key, so continue right, and you'll see a pile of logs. Harry will chase you, so go back and shoot a few logs to make them roll. A few of them will take him down. Grab the pizza slice, scale the planks, grab the key at the end along with the bell, and backtrack to the door at the beginning and unlock it. Scale the planks, grab the cookies, and watch for the falling debris. The bell's flip attacks make this a lot easier than having to maneuver between them. Enter this first door, scale the planks, grab the key, head through the door and continue right. You still need another key. Carefully scale these planks while the debris falls, grab the full pizza and the key on the sawhorse and backtrack to the locked door and you're out of the house and onto the next stage. So you'll emerge on the roof and this guy will try to chase you from the left. Simply head right and climb down the rope. When you get to the bottom, immediately run right. Marvel will start chasing you and you can't stop him. This is going to be dancing a fine line between being cautious and urgent at the same time. You don't want to be going too slow, or Marvel will catch up to you, but you don't want to be moving too fast, or you'll take too many hits and die. Also, you don't want to outrun the screen where you won't be able to see anything coming. Early on, it's rats and bats, so slide to kill the rats and avoid the bats. Grab the dart gun by the window here, and be ready to stop to jump over the bricks and flower pots and TVs that are dropped in front of you, and slide under the trash can lids that sail across the air like frisbees. After a little while, you'll reach the Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center for the final showdown with Marv and Harry. So Marv starts out on the ground level with you. Run here to grab the dart gun, blast him, and then quickly climb the ladder. There's a pizza slice to the left once you get to the top, although Harry will appear around here, so you can slip through and grab it if you like. Just watch out for him, although thankfully here you don't take a one-hit death via choke job in this case. 
you'll just lose one hit point. Quickly scale up the branches, hit Harry with your darts if he lines up with you, and use the ladder in the middle to climb up when you get toward the top, which doesn't take long. When you reach the top, Marvel chase you, hopping from branch to branch like a zombie. Same here as the chase with Harry. You won't die immediately from one hit, but you'll lose a hit point each time. Your darts will stun him, but that's it. To inflict actual damage, you have to watch for the floating Kevin McAllister at the top of the screen. Or at least I want to say that it's supposed to be him. But you're tossing bird feed, so maybe this is supposed to be the Pigeon Lady? I don't know. Wait a minute, this is the Pigeon Lady. The SNES version did a much better job of depicting her. Why the hell does this look like Kevin so much? Either way, she floats back and forth across the screen, and when you press up, she'll toss the bird feed straight down. You want to hit Marv three times, and the pigeons will come to take him out. So you're multitasking throughout all this, avoiding him while watching to line up the bird feed. Easiest way to get an accurate shot is with the dark gun. Get him stunned temporarily. It's a lot easier to line up your shot when he's still. Just remember, he's only stunned for a few seconds. After three shots, Marv is gone, and you'll get Harry next. It's the exact same thing. He chases you around in the same pace, he takes three shots, and once you finish him off, you've beaten the game. You'll get a cutscene of the reunited, decapitated family happy to spend Christmas with each other, while Marv and Harry have to spend it in jail. And that wraps up this game, and that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.